guys thursday night man always great seeing your beautiful lovely faces man and tonight guys we're going to talk about taking the fight to the next level you know and we're going to be in the book of ephesians tonight ephesians 6 so if you have your bible you want to jump into ephesians 6 if not i'm going to go ahead and do a share screen i'm going to bring it up uh, i'll bring that up can everybody see that there is that good there Yep. Reading from verse number 10 and Ephesians 6 again, verse 10. And this is from the New King James Version. And it says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that you may not that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Now, I, I know that if, if I continue there, you, we're going to go through the whole armor and stuff like that. And that's a whole different discussion in itself. So I, I don't even want to touch that point. I just want to focus on that point right now. You see, gentlemen, Paul's describing there that the our fight. Our daily fight is not here on earth. It just simply isn't. And when when I, you know, when I started, you know, researching this and, you know, this was, you know, the Lord put in my heart to talk about this and, you know, take, taking the fight to the next level. And you know, what does that mean? I mean, you know, how do we take the fight to the next level? How, how do we approach our daily struggles, our daily battles? I mean, we here we have Nelson with, you know, struggling through this. We have family members going, go, going through this too. You know, we have personal struggles. We have all kinds of, of things that that just you know harp us and, and wrap us up that we get entangled each and every day. You know, whether it's work, our our you know our marriage, our children, our finances. I mean, you know, the the world has surrounded us with with fights. I mean, we're, we we got to battle our way from the moment we wake up. It's just a fight to get out of bed, and it's a fight to make it through the day and a fight through the evening. You know, just to put your head down, you know, in peace. You know, we're all going through something. But the thing is, I think that that for most men, you know, we we don't take the fight to, to, to that next level. We're, we're fighting on the ground. We're fighting our fight right here in the now. And that is where we're missing the point. See, Paul said our fight is not against flesh and blood. Our struggles are not here on this earth. But yet we focus our you know, our, our biggest efforts are focused on the earth. You know, did, did we, we consider this a battlefield. Let, let me get this. Make, let me make this point real quick, guys. Your wife is not your enemy. Your children are not your enemy. Your boss is not your enemy. Your neighbor, the guy that cut you off in the palmetto or the turnpike this morning is not your enemy. These are things that the enemy puts in front of us to hinder us, to bring us down, so we can get so wrapped up in the here and now that we forget that where our true struggle and our true fight is, it is in the heavenly realms. You see, there, it, the whole fight is a three-dimensional fight. You have earth, the heavens, and the spiritual. And when I talk about taking it to the next level and fighting on that level is I'm talking one thing and one thing only, and that's spiritual warfare. Because you see, our entire battle is a spiritual battle. Everything we battle is on a spiritual level. You know, and, and we don't tend to focus that way. We tend to see things in the natural. And God's saying, hey, listen, I need you to take it somewhere else. 
because in the natural you're 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 fighting an enemy that that you're not going to win up against let's be honest me fighting in the natural against our enemy is like me trying to take on you know an MMA fighter. It's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a beaten all the time. But if I take my fight to the next level and I take it to a spiritual sense and I take it to a heavenly place, now now I flip the tables on the enemy. Now we're fighting on you know I'm on higher ground. You know it's like football. You want home field advantage. You want to play in front of your home crowd. You don't want to go into a hostile stadium, you know, with thousands of fans that are hating on you, trying to just, you know, disrupt you mentally, you know, and trying to get you off of your game. And that's what the world is. We come into enemy territory. We are surrounded by those that wish us ill intent all day. We are not in our backyard. This is not home. We, we've got to get accustomed to saying this is not home. And when we have that mindset, we know that we are foreigners in a foreign land and that our battle, we cannot face and confront the battles here. We need to take it back, back to the house. We need to take it back where we feel, where, where we're confident that we can win, where we know that we are going to win this battle, where we are going to overcome the battle, but not here. So every day we, we wake up and we, we face different situations and we face different problems and we try to tackle it as, as, a, normal, as a normal human being would on human, on human levels and human terms. And God's saying, no, don't take your battle here on earth. Whatever you're struggling here on earth, I need you to take it up. I need you to take your battle to a next level. And when you do that, and when you take that battle, you're going to see a turnaround. You're going to see a victory. If you keep, you know, wrestling with your problems here on earth and you're not taking them to God next level, then you're simply, you're going to, you're going to wear yourself out. If you continue to fight with, with your everyday things that you're battling, you know, with, whatever it is, with your finances, you know, medical problems, you name it because we all got them. And if you just simply try to, you know, put out those fires every day, the way you're doing it, you're going to grow weary. You're going to grow tired. I know most of you probably are in the same situation that I've been in a million times. We grow weary and tired. You know, I, I talk to guys all the time. It's like, Joe, I'm just, I'm just overwhelmed, man. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. You know, my, my kids are going through this or we're going through a you know, financial issue. We're going through a medical issue. We're going, you know, you know, it's, just, it's wearing me down. It's wearing me down. It's just coming down at me, you know, full fledged. And, you know, it's, and then I'll ask, I'm like, well, are you praying about it? Yeah, 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 I pray, but you know what? You know, it's, it's like unanswered prayers. But I'm saying, you, you can't tackle the problems with the same prayer that you would asking God, you know, to bless your, your cheeseburger at work, you know, while you're having lunch, than if you want your kids healed, or, or, or do you want correction in your marriage, or do you want your finances, you know, addressed? You can't use the same type of prayers. It's just not going to happen. You can't say, oh, Lord, you know, just help me with my, with my wife and my, and my kids, you know, and amen. No, because when you want something here on earth, let's face it, guys, you fight for it. You fight for it. When you wanted that promotion at work, you studied, you worked hard, you fought for it. When you wanted to court your wife and you were, you know, you trying to date, you tried to impress her, you took her out, you did, you fought for her heart. You know, if your kids are going through a situation, you will fight on their behalf. You'll do whatever it takes on any level to make, to make it happen. But the thing is, when we come to ask God to, for assistance, we simply just want to say, oh, God, you know, hey, hey, hey. No, he's looking for us to take the fight a little bit stronger. He wants to see the commitment in us. And that's where fasting comes in. Reading of the word comes in, you know, praying without ceasing comes in where, where, where you get up in God's face and there's nothing wrong with that. Let me be honest with you guys. God is a God that wants to hear from you. He doesn't he doesn't want you to come in. all. Oh, oh, no. He wants you to come up like a man would come to another man to talk to him with honor, with reverence and respect. But he wants you to say, hey, listen, I got a situation here and I need you to help me or I need you to address it with me or this is on you. He wants us to speak to him on a manly level. He can handle it. I can assure you God can handle it. But we, we come to God in, in, in a weak state of mind, in a weak sense, when he's begging us, 
to get into his word, when he's begging us to get into the fight, where he's begging us to take you to the next level, he wants us to take things to the spiritual realm. He's like, look, you're fighting here on earth and you're going to get beat up all day. I'm telling you that your problems are not on earth. Your problems are in the spiritual realm and not against flesh and blood. And when we start to really, really comprehend that and we say, hey, wait a minute, I've been fighting this whole thing wrong all along. I've I've been, you know, mad at my coworkers. I've been mad at my wife. I've been mad at my kids. I've been mad at my boss and I'm and I'm going after them. If you turn it around and you go to the spiritual realm and you say, hey, I know who my enemy is. I know where this is coming from. And if I just take it to a spiritual level, I can go ahead and attack this head on and I will turn things around immediately. I will see the change and I will not be as frustrated as I am. Because right now we're trying to fight with our bare hands. We're trying to fight with our minds. We're trying to fight with with human flesh. And you're trying to fight something spiritual. It's, It's like, you know, boxing, you know, shadow boxing. You're going to tire out, but your enemy, your opponent is going to be, you know, fit as a fiddle. Why? Because you're shadow boxing. You're you're just throwing punches in the air. And that's what we're doing when we fight here on earth. We're throwing punches in the air. Because sometimes you say, man, you know, I've I've done everything I can and and still it's not working out for me. You're right. Absolutely. It's not going to work out for you. Take it to the next level. Take it to God. And I'm, and again, not these little, you know, wussy, oh, Lord, you know, no, no, get in there, fight with him, wrestle with him, pray to him, fast, be fervent in your prayers, just be nonstop about it, ask him, bring your brothers along to pray with you, get deep in your relationship with God, get deep in the word, wrap yourself up in his power and his might. Because our fight is on that spiritual level. And when you take yourself from the natural into a spiritual fight, then you're going to be like, whoa, now I got the upper hand. Now I'm in my home court. Now I'm in my stadium. Now the people that are surrounding me are cheering me on to win this victory. But as long as we're here on earth, we're surrounded by one person, our enemy. And we're surrounded by people and negativity and people that just want to bring us down and see us come down. And God's saying, don't take the fight down. I'm asking you to take it up. I'm taking, I'm asking you to kick it up a notch. And when we do that, I guarantee you, gentlemen, you're going to see the transformation in your life. You're going to see the incredible power of God flow through your life. If you just realize that you've been fighting the wrong way this whole time. And that's why Paul urged the Ephesians in chapter six. He said, Hey, Stop fighting against flesh and blood because they got nothing to do with it. Your fight is over there. And as long as you keep fighting over here, the, that problem's not going to go away. The only thing that's going to wear you down. And I guarantee that if I asked each and every one of you in private, individually, each one of us is worn down. We're worn down by our finances. We're worn down by our, our marriages. We're worn down with everyday problems, with just things that burden us. That just everyday problems that just come upon us and some that just are relentless. But what are we doing to turn it around? What are we doing to say, hey, you know what? This has got slapped. I'm, I'm, I'm beat down. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm fearful. I have anxiety. I'm, I'm, you know, I can't keep my head up anymore. I can't see, my, I can't see the sun you know, at, at noon. Take it to the next level. Take your fight to the heavenly realm. Get deep with God. Lock yourself up in that prayer closet and just say, hey, God, you got to do something. Fast. Jesus fasted. Jesus fasted all the time. He became one with the Father, and that's what we need to do, gentlemen. We need to become one with the Father. We need to become one spiritually. You know, when Jesus was going in the garden of Gethsemane and, and, and fear and anxiety overcame, what did he, he, he say? He went to his disciples, pray with me. When was the last time you asked your brothers, hey, can you pray with me about this situation? That you call the buddy up, a friend of yours, somebody that you trusted and just said, hey, man, I'm going through something. I need you to pray with me. I need you to come alongside with me in this situation because I can't handle it anymore. This is out of control or I, I need help. I don't need I, I don't need you to, you know, to 
lend me money. I don't need you to just, you know, hear me out. I need you to pray with me. When was the last time that we genuinely did that with a friend of ours that we just brought him along and said, bro, I just need you to pray with me. Can you do that? Can you, can you give me five minutes of your time and just pray with me on a situation because I'm confused or I'm, I'm tired or I'm afraid or I don't know what's going on or I don't know what to do next. And if we honestly answered that question, chances are we haven't. And it's sad because the Bible is one giant example of us coming together as men and helping one another out and battling for one another and pushing for one another. But when we don't do that, we find ourselves isolated, defeated, and upside down on the ground. And is that, as long as that keeps happening, we're going to continue to lose this fight day in and day out. And then we ask ourselves, well, God's not hearing my prayers. Or, you know, does God really exist? Or, you know, my faith is weak right now. Or I'm not really seeing the hand of God move, move in my life. Those are all legitimate questions we ask ourselves. But then... Answer this question. Are you engaging the spiritual the way God is requiring us to do? Are you fighting on the level that God wants you to fight? Or are you simply fighting on an earthly level, trying thinking that you're going to defeat the enemy that is coming against you? The situation that has come upon you, the problem that has come upon your home, that has come upon your wife, upon your children, upon you, upon you in your marriage or in your careers. Are you fighting the way God has intended it to fight? Nine out of 10 times, we're going to answer no. So we, we keep doing the same thing. We're getting the same result. But in our minds, we want to get a different result. You can't. You can't do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. It's just not going to happen. So guys, tonight, I, I want you to focus on one thing. I want you to take your battle upward. I want to take I want you to take your problems upward. I want you to take your fight upwards. I want you to take the fight back to the enemy so that you and me and all of us can have a victory. But until we don't do that, we will continue to lose time and time again. I guarantee it is a day is long. I don't know if the sun will come up tomorrow, but I can guarantee you if you continue the fight the way you've been fighting, you're going to lose each and every time. No questions asked. You're going to lose each and every time. Because why? Because we're going against what scripture says. Scripture says, fight in the spirit. Fight in the spirit. And we're like, no, no, man, you know what? That's great advice, but I'm going to do things my way. I'm, I'm going to you know, take things, you know, I'm going to take the bull by the horns. I'm going to take, you know, matters into my own hands. How's that been working out for you? Probably to this way I'm thinking right now. It hasn't. I know it hasn't worked for me. But when we take our battles and we take it to God, and if we got to we, we, we gotta just jump in with our friends and, and our brothers and pray together for a situation, for a healing, for a cause, for whatever it is, if we come together or if we fast, together as a unit or as an individual, you're going to see the change. You're going to see the power of God manifest. And when you see that, you're going to be blown away by God's mercy and his power. You're going to be blown away. But until that moment comes, you're not going to see it. Guys, I'm going to preach for you just for a minute because I don't like preaching you know, here too much. But you see, when an eagle when the eagle wants to have a fight with a snake, he comes down from the sky and he flies down and he tries to grab the snake. And if he misses by any chance that this majestic bird with his giant wingspan misses, now that eagle's on the ground. And what does the snake do? Well, he knows he's got the upper hand on the eagle because he's not going out like that. So he starts to curl himself around the eagle and he tries to peck at him. And you see the eagle fighting him. And he starts, you know, with his talons and he's trying to get, you know, trying to get unwrapped from the snake. But the snake knows he's got the upper hand because why? He's on the ground. He's curled up. He knows what he's got to do. He's stepping back and he's starting to, to smack at that eagle. And the eagle's doing everything. He, he's flapping his wings. He's trying to get him off. He's trying to do everything in his power. And he's wrestling with him on the ground. Because for a moment there, the eagle has a lapse. See, the eagle forgets that he is the king of the sky. 
See, the eagle forgets that he owns the sky. He is the bird of all birds. He was created majestically. He doesn't fly, he soars. That's why he is the king of the skies. He is above all birds. So for a moment, the eagle recognizes that he is a king. So what does he do? He takes his fight to the next level. He grabs the snake and then he flies as high as he can go. He takes the snake to the atmosphere as high as he can go. So at that point, the snake realizes I'm not in the ground. So the snake starts twirling and twisting because he don't know what's going on. He's trying to get a defensive position, but he knows there's nothing he can do. So what does this cunning eagle do? He lets him go. He lets him go so the snake realizes you ain't touching the ground. You on my turf now. Now you in my house. You are in the sky. This is where I am king. You might have been the king on the ground, but I am the king of the air. So he lets him go and then he swoops back down and he grabs him again. And then he takes him back up again until he takes him so high that the eagle passes out. I mean, that the snake passes out from atmospheric pressure and he conquers him. And he conquers him. Why? Because he took the fight back to the sky. Because he took the fight back to the sky. Because he knew on the ground that that snake would have bit him, would have curled him up, and would have had him for lunch. The eagle stood no chance whatsoever on the ground. But when he took his fight back, where he is the king, now he's got the upper hand. Now he's, he's, he's got the advantage point. Now he is the one that's on the offensive, not on the defensive. So gentlemen, you are the son of a king. You are the son of the living king. So why are you fighting on the ground? Take your fight to the sky. Take your fight to the sky like the eagle and let it go. Let that problem go. Let your work problems, take them up to the sky. Take your marriages, take it up to the sky. Take your children, let them up in the sky. Let your fears, your anxieties, what's keeping you up at night, take it up to the sky. Let it go. Let it go. And know that the fight up there, you are, you've got the advantage. You've got match point set. There is nothing that's going to stop you when you take that fight up there. Because why? Because your problems have nowhere to land. There's no ground for it to take fight against you. It's lost its balance. It's lost everything. Why? Because it's not in its house. You are in control at that point. You are in control when you take your prayers to the heavens. Now you are taking the fight back to the enemy. The eagle knows that. The eagle knows that because he knows that he is the king of the skies. So he took his enemy. He took him up on top and he changed the playing field. He changes it. Oh, I got you now. This is my house. Gentlemen, take your problems to the sky. Take your problems tonight to the sky. Take it up to God. Let it go. And you're going to see how God's going to transform your life, how he's going to transform whatever is keeping you up at night. And you're going to say, wow, this was all I had to do. This was all I had to do. You are the son of the living God. You are a son of a king. Don't fight on the ground. Don't fight in somebody else's house. Take the fight back to your house. Take the fight where you have backup. Take the fight where you are surrounded by the Holy Spirit. Take the fight where God is there waiting for you to destroy your enemy. Because as long as you do it down here, you're fighting in somebody else's house. You're fighting in somebody else's rules. And he's going to trap you in fear and depression and anxiety and anything else he can get your hands around you. And he's going to wrap you up like that snake around that eagle until you finally get in your head and you realize, I am the son of a king. And I can take flight and I can take this elsewhere where I know I'm going to win. Gentlemen, this is your fight tonight. Take your fight tonight to the next level. Take it to the sky, gentlemen. Take it to the sky. Guys, that's all I got, man. Floor is yours tonight.